Hi everyone! My name is Elizabeth and welcome back to my channel in which I document my 2021 no buy year. For this video, it is another round of depotting. I had mentioned in my first depotting video, which I will link up in the cards, that I wanted to make this a bit of a series, although I don't know, this might be this might be it. It might just be maybe this one and then another like a roundup video after I'm done depotting everything, taking everything out of palettes and its original packaging and organizing it in all of my magnetic palettes. So we'll see about that, but this is I guess technically part two of my depotting series in which I try to depot all of my pre-made palettes, my single shadows like my MAC eyeshadows, my NYX eyeshadows, and some of my, I have some palettes that aren't eyeshadow palettes. I have a few highlighter palettes that I want to depalette, depot, and then I also have, I think I have a few blush, I think it's just single blushes that I'm also going to take out of the original packaging. So I want to get all of that out, get it all into magnetic palettes. Part of the reason why I wanted to do this for my no buy year was I feel like having everything together will really show me, help me get a better sense for how much I have. I talked about this in my previous video, the perceived gap phenomenon where you think you have this perceived gap in your collection, whether it's your makeup collection or your wardrobe or your nail polish collection, whatever the case may be. You see something, you really want it, and you think, oh, I don't have that, so I, I wanna buy it because I don't have it. But then if you really dig deep in your collection, you find that you have something that if not very, very close to that exact thing, it it's close enough that it would still give you that same feeling, that same vibe. Depotting really gives you a better handle on how much stuff you actually have and more of an awareness around the fact that it takes just seconds to add something to your collection, to click, you know, purchase cart or whatever the case may be, but it could take you a long, long time to use that product up and I think there's a at least for me, there's a big disconnect there between how much I have, how long it will take me to actually go through what I have, and the fact that there aren't really as many gaps in my makeup collection as I think there are. So I'm going to be doing some depotting today, and I also want to kind of do... I want to kind of have a chit-chat with, with all of you about something I'm thinking of for my channel, and I just kind of wanted some feedback about it. I've been thinking about doing a project pan and I, I'm subscribed to Kelly Gooch's channel. She does a lot of project panning. I'll link her channel down below as well as Kyla Fish who does a lot of project panning and it seems like a really good fit for a no buy, low buy channel. So I've been thinking about doing one and I kind of want to just vomit out all of my thoughts about it and get some feedback from you all on whether or not it would be a good idea for my channel to do a project pan or if it would be redundant considering some of the things I'm I'm already doing like my monthly makeup and shop my stash kind of stuff so I'm gonna be depotting and chatting with you all and please sound off in the comments I would love your feedback on depotting and especially on the project pan idea would really love that feedback and I'm gonna be there's gonna be parts where I'm just kind of working on the depotting and it, I'm gonna be fast forwarding through the footage I don't think I need to keep you all you know you don't need to sit there through every second of what I'm doing so there will be some chit chat and some parts where I'm just fast forwarding it through and just have some music um, play, overlaid on the video so Let's get on into it. Okay, so Z Potter is on. Now, as I already mentioned in my introduction, I'm just gonna kind of do this, just kind of poke along. There might be times when I fast forward through the footage. It's probably not gonna be the most interesting thing. And then I also wanna chat with you about project panning. Let me just get started first and then we can, I'll get into the 
whole project panning thing. Okay, so these, the NYX shadows that I have here, these are all the NYX shadows I have, just these four. These are all duochrome shadows. I wanna get them out of their packaging. They are not magnetic, so the induction plate technology isn't going to work. So I'm going to have to put these, I'm just gonna have to heat these up the old fashioned way. All right, so I have the NYX Duochrome in Frostbite and the NYX Duochrome in Savage. So we're just gonna let those get warm and I will we'll test them out and see if I can pry them out of there. So yeah, while we're waiting on that, I wanna talk to you about project panning. I've been watching a lot of project panning videos lately, specifically Kelly Gooch, her YouTube channel, she has a whole project panning playlist. Uh, Kyla Fish also has a project panning playlist. And the reason why I'm thinking about it is just because I really want my content on my channel to really reflect back on the overall goal of the year, of, of my, my 2021 no buy year challenge. And it just seems like project panning might be a good fit for something like that. It might be a good, it just seems to make sense to me. What I wanted to talk with you about is I've done some research about project panning and sometimes I struggle with the difference between project panning and say a shop my stash, which I've done two shop my stash slash monthly makeup bins already. And I just don't know if I started a project pan and was creating content around it, if that would be redundant. Because I would like to keep, I would like to keep my shop, my stash, my monthly shop, my stash series going. I have found the shop, my stashes to be very valuable and have really helped me to get to know some of my makeup products better and find some new favorites and also really cement in my mind that a lot of these perceived gaps that I think I have in my makeup collection, for example, when I see something new on Trend Mood or on you know another beauty YouTuber's channel and I think to myself, oh, I really need that. I don't have that in my collection. It turns out that I actually do and that I don't actually need those things. You know, that I, I had it all along. This thing that I'm perceiving as not having, I have actually had in my collection all along. And I really think the Shop My Stash is valuable for that, for, for learning that and really gaining that understanding that these perceived gaps are just that. They are perceived, not actual, not actual gaps in my makeup collection. So I'm trying to find a way to make both types of content relevant because it seems like there's a lot of overlap, the shot my stash and the project pan. So I would love your opinion on that. I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's worthwhile for me to do a shot my stash? I mean, actually, that's not what I really need to know because I'm going to keep doing that. I guess it's more... Do you think that a shot my that shot my stat oh I just totally gouged that makeup. Yay! That shot my stash content it can live alongside a project pan and that it wouldn't have too much overlap. That it would make sense. Okay, this is totally crumbling. Cracking came out. It just that was frost. You can see how much it cracked. That is less desirable. I think I should get it out first. Okay, it came out. Bye bye. It's just a bummer that it cracked. Tap that back down. Tap that back down. Oh, see how pretty that color is. Frost. Oh, it's probably not picking up 
on camera, but it's gorgeous. Looks like I was able to get that crack kind of tapped back down in there. So what do you think? Sound off in the comments. Can Project Pan content live alongside Shot My Stash content? Oh wow, look at that. That just melted, wow. Okay, left that on there way too long. Ooh, it's a nice smell too, in case you're wondering if it smells as gnarly as it looks. It absolutely does. It smells like tires, like burnt tires. I'm gonna use, and let's go ahead and heat up two more. I'm just gonna try to keep them off that spot that I just, that icky spot I just made, okay. So let me know what you think. Can they live side by side? And what I was thinking was doing, oh, that came out so nicely. So despite the disgusting state of the bottom of the pot, it came out much, much more easily than the other one did. I need like more hands. I'm afraid to touch that metal pan. I think it's gonna be a lot hotter than the other one. Oh, there it goes. Bye-bye. That was savage. Oh, what did I just put on here? I should probably look that up. Um, this one is glass slipper. And this one is mermaid. What I was thinking for doing a uh, project pan was I was thinking of having a core group of products and that would be my project pan for 2021. All the research I've done indicates like you need to just, you need to decide on a, a time frame for a project pan. So I was thinking of aligning it with my no by year time frame, so 2021, and picking some core products that are gonna stay in my makeup bin, my monthly makeup bin, that those will never get swapped out every time I do a shot my stash each month, and that those will stay there and as the project pan, and then I'll, I'll find a way to keep them separate in the makeup bin so that I know which ones are which, and so I don't accidentally come, you know, mix them up. And then I can give updates, project pan updates, just on those items that are gonna make up sort of my core makeup collection. And a lot of the research that I did, um, especially on the Curated Hearts YouTube channel, indicated that it's best to only choose one or two products in each category for your project pan. And that, that for my brain, that makes sense because I just feel like I would you know, I would make progress faster on the products if there's a very limited number of them rather than choosing a whole bunch and then not seeing as much progress from the perspective of the of the project pan. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking doing a core collection, one or two products from each category, like foundation, concealer, blush, etc., etc., and that those would be part of the project pan. So that was my first thought about Project Pan. My second thought was a lot of the content that I see on YouTube, Project Panning content, the YouTuber is finding some way to keep track of how much progress they have made in their, on each product. So they'll use a, like a Sharpie marker to mark the level of the item when they start and then kind of every single update they will mark the level of the product. I think this really applies to liquid products now that I'm thinking about it. Now that I'm talking it out with you. I think for actual panning, like, like for example, like an eyeshadow where you would see the pan it would be more just a visual to see that the panned area has gotten larger and larger and larger, that you're not really marking it with a Sharpie or anything like that. Because I feel like doing that, you would, you would mark the actual makeup product itself. So I think marking the level using a Sharpie is something I would only do for liquid products. And then for stick products, I've seen people use like a, what am I trying to say? A index card. They'll put an index card. They'll, they'll twist the product all the way out and then hold an index card up next to it and mark the level that way. And then when they do their updates for their project pan, they'll show, they'll do an updated mark on the card 
to show where it is. That's another part of it that I'm thinking about that that seems to be accepted practice for project panning that you have to show your progress in some way with each check-in. So I think I'll do that if I decide to go ahead with this project pan. I'll, I'll, so I'm gonna do it for, I would do it for a year, core products, one to two in each category, and mark my progress using Sharpie or my using a note card or just using photos of, of the pan itself. So that's it for my thoughts for now at least. I feel like I'm never gonna wanna buy eyeshadow again after seeing, after getting all of my singles and palettes depotted and put in several big palettes. I just have this sneaking suspicion that I have so many products. So I have so many eyeshadow products. And I rarely, I just never use eyeshadow. It seems pretty perverse that I have this much product for eyes and use it so very little. Speaking of which, that makes me think more about the curated heart. It was one of the things she mentioned as far as why she does project panning was because she, oh, that's gonna stick. Are you gonna stick? Let's get these MAC shadows going. This one's Fig One, and this is Summer Haze. On her blog and on her YouTube channel, the Curated Heart, she talks about, I need to find what her real name is, but sure, the name of her channel is Curated Heart, and she does talk about how, and I loved this, she talked about one of the reasons why she encourages people to do project panning is because it takes, what did she say, something like, it takes five seconds to buy a new product and three months to three years to use it up. And so many of us don't realize that when we're spending those five seconds to purchase new product, like shiny new things, we're not taking into account how much we already have and how long it takes to use things up. And I think Shop My Stash is good for that as well. But with Project Pan, one of the things I really like about it is that it's so explicit and using you know, measuring how much you have left is so much a part of the process that I think it gives you a really hard data point, a really strong data point to refer to that basically proves that no, you actually don't need more product. You think you have that perceived gap, you know, you're having that perceived gap syndrome, I should call it. So you have perceived gap syndrome, you buy this product in five seconds and then you're stuck with that product for, you know, three months to three years, not really having a good understanding of how long it takes to actually use product up. I want your feedback, I do, truly, I do. I want your feedback about what you think about project panning. Have you ever done one? That's another thing, like have you ever done a project pan? How did it go? Did you feel like it was a worthwhile experience? Yeah, I mean, please sound off in the comments. I, I feel like I need, <laughs> I need community support for this. <laughs> like I need, I need people to tell me, yes, this is a good idea, you should do it, or no, it's redundant and it doesn't make sense if you're also going to do, shop my stash every month. That's another thing, how often should I do check-ins if I did a project pan. I feel like if I did it, I would start it in March because we're almost at the end. It's shocking to believe that we're already halfway through February. So I probably wouldn't start it till March. So my first, my intro would be in March and then do monthly check-ins. Let's pry you out, friend. Ooh, I just gouged it a little. Ooh, and I cracked it. Oh my God. No. Do not, oh gosh, no, no. Oh no, it's cracking so bad. The next ones came out so much easier. Yikes, yikes, my fig one. Ugh, oh, that sucks. So I think I would do monthly check-ins. That bummed me out that I cracked fig one. I love fig one.
Okay, this is coming out so much easier than the other one. Like fig one, was, that was, <laughs> that was stressful. This one seems less stressful. You seem less stressful, friend, for me. Well, I think maybe I put colors on one side, like bright colors on one side and then neutrals on the other. Now this is my, what was this called? This was my Urban Decay. So here was the more like the outer shell of the packaging. I don't remember which Urban Decay palette this was. I mean, it's a pretty old palette, but you can see there's Blue Bus, Gunmetal, Cobra, Baked, Hijacked, Lost, Gravity, Bender, Midnight Cowgirl, Sin, Midnight Rodeo, Crystal, Zephyr, Skimp, Missionary, and Bust. You know, the more I think about it, the more I think I should do a, a project pan. I, and like I said, I still would like your input. I may even do a poll, like YouTube has polls now, which is kind of fun. But I, I don't know, it just seems like such a good fit for a no buy year. And my analytical OCD brain, I feel like would really enjoy the whole measurement, <laughs> like collecting hard quantitative data about how much of the product I've used. That just seems like it would be right up my alley. Yeah, I think I'm gonna try it. It's definitely nice, I would like your input, so let me know.
God is the last one. Okay, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then put the rest of the magnetic stickers in the back and show you once they're all in the palette. So be right back. All right, here is the finished product. So this is it um, for the actual watching me do stuff, but I think this is actually going to be my last depotting video because it's just gonna be more of the same, which I don't think, I doubt anyone's interested in seeing that. So, um, but I will show you when I'm done depotting everything, I'll do a sort of organizing my depotted stash video. So that is it for my depotting part two slash should I do a project pan video. So please, please let me know in the comments what you think. Have you done a project pan? Do you follow any project panners? Who are they? Do you think it would be a good idea for my channel? Would it be redundant considering I do, I'm planning on doing monthly shop my stash, my monthly makeup bin. Let me know what you think. I would love to hear your ideas and your opinions. Please remember to give this video a like. Please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And if you wanna join me on this crazy 2021 no buy journey, please make sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you are notified of all of my upcoming uploads. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!